Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. With the Flame 2020.1 update, some new viewing enhancements have been added to the image toolset, which will give you more visual feedback as you segment your image with selectives. This has come from a combination of improving our design and your user feedback concerning selectives. You can use any media to follow along, and these new viewing tools are available in the Image Timeline Effects, the Image Node, and the Action Node in Batch and Batch Effects. So here I have a shot of a London bus stop, which already has two selectives applied. If you are new to the selectives, please go to the beginning of the Image Toolset series to go over the fundamental basics. Now as I scrub the time bar, a bus comes into the shot, which is affected by the two selectives. The first selective is a pixelation of the sign using a G-mask and planar tracking. And the second selective uses motion vector analysis to add more motion blur to the bus. You can see all the selectives and their components in the manager. Now currently, you are looking at the result view which is mapped to F4. This view shows your output composite from this tool. Now in previous versions of the Flame products, if you wanted to view a component of the composite, you would use a viewer known as the Object View. So you could select the Motion Vectors map for instance, and press F8 to see the Object View of this map. This hasn't changed in the Flame 2020.1 update. However, the workflow with the Object Viewer is that you first select your component, and then press F8 or switch the Viewing pull-down menu. So there is a lot of selecting and hotkeys just to toggle the Object View for the different objects. This is very necessary for a full-on 3D composite, where you may need to look through multiple cameras, lights, maps and objects. However, when working with the Image Toolset, and the selectives in particular, this SELECT AND VIEW and SELECT AND VIEW operation can be quite tedious as well as slow you down. It's also quite easy to forget to manually switch the object viewer each time you choose a selective. This just makes it easier to lose focus if you're working with multiple selectives. With all those points made, a new dynamic viewer specifically aimed at the selectives has been added into the workflow. This is called the Selective View. It's dynamic in the sense that it automatically updates as you work between multiple selectives. To show how it works, let's say you've been looking at the Result View and nothing is selected in the Manager. If you press F9 for the Selective View, it will select the very first selective in the stack, and this will display the Selective Mat for this selective. If you were to select any other selectives in the Manager, the Selective View will automatically switch the focus to the new Selective selection. This is in direct contrast to the Object View, which requires manual switching each time you select another selective. So initially, with the Selective View, nothing actually needs to be selected to display the first selective. Secondly, just by selecting another selective, automatically changes the focus of the Selective View. Please note that if you select any other object in the composite, the Selective View will not update. This view is solely for selectives. Now for those of you who prefer a keyboard shortcut, you can press either Z or X to toggle the Selective selection, which in turn updates the Selective View. So you should be able to work much faster with the Selective View and always know what selective you're looking at. I'll reiterate, F8 is the shortcut for the Object View, and F9 is the shortcut for the Selective View. Now both views have a multi-toggle function. When you first press F9 to view the Selective View, you get the Selective Mat output. When you press F9 again, you now get the current Selective input. And if you press F9 for a third time, you get the current result of the current selective with any Selective Effect shaders applied. So these viewers have three modes. What I do want to point out, is if you toggle the Selective View back to the Selective Input, 
you will see that you get a pink overlay showing the isolated region of the selective. In previous versions of the Flame products, you were only able to see these regions in the matte view. So now you're able to see the segmented region in both the selective matte and the selective input. Once again, if you switch between the different selectives using the selective view, you will see the overlay update matching the behaviour you saw earlier with the selective matte outputs. So when creating a selective, regardless whether it's a key, mask, 3D AOV or a combination of components, you can look at the selective matte or the selective input to define the area of the image you are isolating. Now if you want to change the overlay colour or adjust its opacity, this can be done via the Setup menu in the Display tab. You can also turn it on and off if you want. This change is local to this specific Timeline Effects or node. If you want to alter these settings globally, just go to the Flame Main Preferences and you can change the settings in the Action tab. Finally, as an added bonus, the overlay is also available in the Object View if you prefer working that way. So that concludes the visual enhancements we've added for the Image Toolset and Selective Workflows. We hope this will increase your interactivity with the Selective View and that you can better visualise your selectives between the matte output and the new overlays. Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to the Flame 2020.1 update. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning channel for future videos and thanks for watching.